I'm going to start in exactly the same way that we did here. We're going to take a number, uh, rather we're going to take some polynomials that we know we can multiply and therefore we're going to go through the division process. Okay? So after thinking about multiplication and division, the subheading is um, bringing these to multiplication and division to polynomials. Bringing multiplication and division to polynomials. That's what we're about to do. Okay. Now, we are going to start with my favorite example. The example I always pull out as a first one, right? My favorite quadratic, which is this guy. Okay? x squared plus 5x plus 6. We're going to begin with him. Okay? Now, you guys know how to factorize this, right? You already know what the factors are. What are the factors of x squared plus 5x plus 6? Um, I think the pair of numbers that are going to work here, which add to 5 and multiply 6, are 2 and 3. Right, 2 and 3. So here are my factors. Okay, here are my factors, yes. And this, what this corresponds to, is saying this. I can multiply these two together and get this. Okay? Therefore, it stands to reason that I should be able to say this. I should be able to divide this guy by that, and if I divide both sides by x plus 2, I just get left with x plus 3 on the right hand side. Are you comfortable with that idea? Uh, all I've done is divide both sides, I might even write that, divide both sides by, uh, what did I divide by? x plus 2. Okay, now that's just moving the algebra around, okay? But what if I asked you, just like I asked here, I said, well, if I just do 7 into 301, 301, how many times can 7 go, go into it? If I asked you this, how would you do this? How would you say, oh, how many x plus 2s fit into x squared plus 5x plus 6? How, how do you work that out? Now, that's a bit weird because there's numbers in there that you don't know what their value is. There are x's, okay? But the reason why I started with long division for numbers is because you can do long division with polynomials. And I'm going to show you how. So this is called polynomial long division under, under this. The first thing we do under long division is we, we do a long division symbol, right? So let's draw a long division symbol. Wrong color. There's my long division symbol. Now, what pieces go where? Well, if I have 7 here and 301 here, 301 is the big number that has, it's, it's on my numerator. That's what I'm dividing, right? Now, I'm not dividing 301. I'm dividing that guy, x squared plus 5x plus 6. So that's what goes underneath here, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay. Now, 7 is what I wrote at the front of my long division here because 7 is what I'm dividing by. This time, I'm dividing by x plus 2. So x plus 2 will hang out the front. Okay. Now, this next part is a bit weird. I'm going to try and explain it as best I can, but it will still probably sit a bit funny with you, okay? So let me try and explain. At this point, I started to go through and I say, well, how many 7s fit into 3? No 7s fit into 3. Well, how many 7s fit into 30? And so on, okay? When you have a look at this, we're not dealing with numbers anymore, or we are dealing with numbers and we don't know what they are. That's a bit confusing, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Remembering that x can be any number I like, right? x could be one, x could be a quarter, x could be a million, right? It can vary, that's why we call it variable, okay? x is the important number. Do you see that? This two, he's just gonna do his thing, whatever, whatever happens, right? But if x is like a million, for example, that was one of the numbers I said, then when you do, how many one million and twos fit into this, clearly the million is more important than the, two, than the two. Does that make sense? The x is really the term that I'm interested in, okay? So when I asked how many sevens fit into 30, what corresponds to that over here is how many x's fit into x squared? How many x's fit into x squared, okay? Now, let me just do this with some actual numbers, okay? For example, here's x and here's x squared. Okay, a number like say, or if x was equal to 5, what's x squared? 25. 
So how many fives are there in 25? Five. There are five. Uh, how about a number like, say, 11? What's 11 squared? 121. 121. How many 11s fit into 121? 11. 11, right? In fact, how many x's fit into x squared? X. You always get x number of x into x squared. In fact, that's exactly what x squared means. It's x, lots of x. Okay. So therefore, up here when I say, how many x's fit into x squared? The answer is, that many x's fit into x squared. Okay? I'm not dealing with <coughs> numbers just like here, but this process, that me writing down that x, is exactly the same as me saying, there are, um, there are four sevens that I can get into 30, and there are x x's that I can get out of x squared. Okay? okay, now, when I wrote that four down, what did I do with it? I, I multiplied it back, did I not? Okay, And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I take this x and I multiply it back. x times x is? x squared. x squared. But I'm not just multiplying by x squared, right? Or by x. I did say that 2 was less important, but it's not like completely unimportant. It's still there, okay? So I'm going to do x times the plus 2 as well, which is plus 2x. Are you happy with that? Okay, now again, come back to the long division. When I got my 28 down here, that was 7 times 4. What did I do with that 28? What happened to it? What did I use it for? I did a subtraction, didn't I? Right? I did 30 take away 28, and that gave me the 2. Well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm going to do that number, x squared plus 5x. That's kind of like the 30 at the front here. And I'm going to take away x squared plus 2x. When you do this, take away this, how many x squared terms get left? Three. Hold on. How many x squared terms get left? Zero. 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 So that just right. disappears. But then you do 5x take away 2x, which is, like you just told me, 3x. Are you okay with that? Hmm. Okay. Now, at this point here, <clears throat> I said, oh, <clears throat> I've got a 2 left over, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I said, well, I, I need to bring this guy down, this next number down. I need to bring him into the division because I haven't dealt with him yet. In the same way, I've got this number hanging over here, which I haven't brought into the division yet. So I'm going to bring him down here, plus 6. Do you see that? Just like I brought down the 1 here, I'm going to bring down the next number over, plus 6. Okay? So, um, yes? Why can't we just uh, put a three, a 3 on that? Ah, okay. So... The short answer is I can, but remember how I said the 2 is less important, but still important, okay? When I consider the x, I'm really considering the x plus 2 together, which is why I multiply the whole thing. So here, I'm also going to need the 2. It's also going to come into play, right? As you'll see in a second. How many x's fit into 3x? Three. Three. Answer, 3. So I say plus 3. That's, um, that's a bit of a relief, isn't it? Okay. What do I do with this 3? Well, just like before, I multiply it down, right? Which gives me 3x plus 6. What do I do at this stage? What did I do last time? Zero. I subtracted and I got 0. What does that 0 mean? Remainder. It's the remainder. There's no remainder because it divides nice and cleanly through. Okay? So I'm, I might as well write <coughs> 0. Okay? So this is me saying, okay, well... This times this equals that. And I've proved it. I've shown that the division works with long division. Why did I bother doing that when I knew all that in the first place? Okay. And the answer is, well, you know, a lot of times you're going to need to divide something. And the reasons will become clear as we go further into 2 in the next year. Where they don't divide cleanly through. Okay. These are the ones that exactly work. But there are others that don't. So I'm really going to quickly show you. Again, let's just make a conclusion from this. Therefore, x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to x plus 2 times x plus 3 plus there's that remainder 0 hanging on the end there. 